Okay, so I have a few more devices running at the same time to get this whole thing recorded and I hope it will work out. So I already released a first impressions video of the Asus BIOS Switch Alpha 12, which was actually kindly enough provided to me from Cyberport. So check out their links if you maybe live in Germany, Austria or Switzerland. But what everyone wanted to know is how well the cooling solution works, because the unique feature of this device is the liquid loop, which is kind of a water cooled system without a fan. And this on a Core i5 or even Core i7. Of course, this could come with a few trade-offs, but how well it works is what I want to tell you in this video. I did tests for the last two days. I tried to do everything. I filtered out the most important stuff and there will be a lot of numbers. So if that's maybe too boring for you, you can maybe just jump to the conclusion. But if you want, there are a lot of numbers and it should pretty much provide you a great amount of information for you to see if that's good enough for you. So one thing that I want to get out of the way is to tell you one thing, because when I talk about the cold side, I mean the right side here, the middle of course would be the middle. And when I will talk about the hot side, it will be around here because this is the hottest spot of the device. So when I go through the values, just keep in mind what I'm talking about. And I want to actually start off telling you a few base values. So just so we know what we are actually talking about. The room temperature was at 28 degrees, always Celsius. So it is already noticeably warmer here in my studio when I did all my tests. So real life use in a normal room, especially for example, down in my living room or something like that would have actually resulted with a few degrees of better values. So keep that in mind. The idle temperature of the core was at around 40, 44 degrees after like half an hour doing nothing just standing there. The cool side, and I already talked about which one that is, was at around 33 degrees, the middle at 35 degrees, and the hot side was at 36 degrees. So I wanna now switch to the other screen and talk about the ADA results that I got. Because what I did is a test ADA 64 CPU load of 100%. After five minutes, we still had the full load of 2.7 gigahertz, it always jumped between 2.65 and 2.7. A core temperature of 58 degrees and a maximum back temperature, this is on the hot side, of 37 degrees. After 10 minutes, we still had the full 2.7 gigahertz. The core jumped to 63. The cold side was at 36 degrees and the hot side at 32 or 42. And I hope these are not too many numbers, but you can just see that and we could skip, for example, here the 15 minutes mark and jump right over to well, half an hour. Still 2.7. The core reached pretty much its maximum of 68 to 70 degrees. The cold side was already warm at 37 degrees, middle of 42 and the hot side of 46. This already is a little bit more than you would usually like to hold in your hand, but I don't think you will use your device on load with all that for half an hour in your hand. So I expect this to be on the table and then it's not a big issue. After 40 minutes, this is where the breakdown happened. It jumped down to 2.55 gigahertz with the core reaching 64 and 67. So you can see it cooled a little bit down and therefore the clock was lower. The cold side was 38 degrees, the middle at 43 degrees and the hot side at 47. Now, the after one hour, it still stayed at 2.55. It never really got down. It jumped like twice to 2.52, but just for a split second or so. So it maintained the core at 65 to 68 degrees. The cold side was at already quite warm, 39 degrees, and the middle at 32, with the hot side being 47, which was already uncomfortably warm. Now, I then did a five minute cool down and we had a core of 45 and a hot side of 40. So you can see it cools down pretty, pretty quickly. So let's get to the summary just real quick. We stayed after for 40 minutes at a maximum temperature or clock speed of 2.7. So I, this is something that I would already call not throttling. Okay, it did go to 2.52, I would say actually 2.55, which is very respectable because we had pretty much no airflow here in the room. It's pretty much staying here. There is no airflow in this room. And this is still absolutely respectable. A maximum core speed of 68 to maybe 70 degrees. It spiked up maybe to 72 for just a few split seconds, which is totally fine. The maximum cold side temperature was 39 degrees. The middle 43 and the hottest temperature on the hottest spot was at around 47 degrees, which definitely is too warm to be held in your hand, but I already talked about that. The SSD speed or the SSD temperature reached a maximum of 49 degrees. Not really sure if that's that important, the temperatures on the front were always about two degrees lower than on the back. And the battery on full CPU with this test lasted for about two hours. So I want to switch now back to the second screen again, because what I did then was an ADA64 CPU and GPU load 
test at 100%. The device was already cooled down because I did the test on the next day because I had to recharge the battery and I only made two values here. One after 30 minutes because it then go went down to 1.5 gigahertz. It kept the 2.5 to maybe like 10, 15 minutes. So after that, it throttled down. After all, the core stayed at 69 to 60. Uh, 66 to 69 the cold side was at really hot 39 with a middle of 45 and the hot side of 48 the ssd was at around 50 51 uh, 52 degrees after one hour it stayed at 1.4 degrees and then it didn't change anymore because you can see already the core went down to 62 65 so it did cool down all the time so it jumped between 1.4 and 1.5 pretty much all the time with a, around 1.4 at the usual average the cold side was still at 39 which is definitely quite warm the middle 44 and the hot side of 47 so it cooled down a little bit to get the temperatures down and the SSD speed was at around 49 degrees. So a summary for the GPU and CPU test. There is a gradual breakdown after like 10 minutes, then it went slowly down from 2.5, 2.3, 2.1, until it landed after like 15 minutes or half an hour at 1.5. So it definitely loses performance, but keep in mind, you won't really have constant 100% CPU and GPU load. So real life usage should definitely keep the maximum temperatures or the maximum clocks for a longer period of time so this is the worst case scenario keep that in mind the minimum clock that we reached was 1.4 gigahertz the maximum core speed was 69 degrees with a few little spikes to 75 but i don't really count those the maximum cold set was 49 degrees the middle one 45 degrees and the hot side of 48 so this is pretty much the hottest temperature that i achieved the ssd was usually at 52 degrees but for a moment it jumped to about 56 for just a quick little moment in time so i did one another test because i added a fan and i will show you this one in a few seconds on the screen so since i forgot this in the first take i wanted to still show you off the fan that i used it was the only one available to me on the desk so i could push air towards the device it is about 120 centimeters away from the microphone on the test it was 80 centimeters so just so you can get a feel of how loud it actually was and how much air it was maybe pushing Okay, so I have no idea if the microphone even picks that up, but it's definitely not something extremely loud. And if you maybe use a smaller one way closer to the device, you would get the same airflow, but this was just the only thing that I had available. Okay, this was it. It was at a distance of 80 centimeters of its, on its lowest setting. So it was quite quiet after all, so not really something too disturbing. And this was to test how much a small fan maybe at closer range would bring because it was still okay because some people still could maybe use a fan somewhere around the screen or just a room that is a little bit of a lower temperature and has airflow which my room just doesn't have so what we can see here is right after one hour of full cpu and gpu load no cooldown phase so this is still after the one hour i had after 10 minutes already 1.5 the core went down to 54 to 56 degrees the cold side went down to 32 the middle to 36 and the hot side to 38 with a ssd of 40 degrees so you can see the fan definitely helped a lot and it cooled down the whole device after 15 minutes the core went to 56 to 58 degrees but we already had 1.9 gigahertz back after 20 minutes we had already 2.2 gigahertz back with a core speed of 60 to 62 the cold side of 32 middle of 45 and the hot side of 39 with the ssd being at 41 and sorry if those are a lot of numbers but this is the only in-depth review that i can give you to not miss out on anything so what i did then is 28 minutes and the, the, the number sounds odd but i will tell you right again why because the battery died after one hour and 28. So I would say like one and a half hours later of a full GPU and CPU load, the battery was just dead. So with CPU, we had right two hours with GPU added a half hour less, but keep in mind, you won't really do this in normal use. And what we had then was back already 2.5 gigahertz. So pretty much the whole power was again there because this 2.5 gigahertz was the maximum power that we have with the gpu and cpu so it cooled down good enough the core was at 4 64 to 67 degrees the cold side already back to 33 the middle to 37 and the hot side at 40 so this means this would have been usable again so a summary for the gpu and cpu with the fan 
a noticeable decrease of temperatures by around 10 to 15 degrees all over the map. And sorry if I check my, my notes, but otherwise I wouldn't be able to make this video in any other better way. CPU clocks gradually increased within half an hour to almost full potential of 2.5 gigahertz. So the fan definitely helped. And if you maybe put a smaller fan closer to it, you could actually play games or do a video rendering without losing any performance. And this is respectable because usually you won't need this. And then it's great to have a Core i5 system without a fan. So I am absolutely fine with that decision. Battery with full CPU and GPU, like I said, one and a half hours. So let's get to the final conclusion, Get give you my latest notes. Keep in mind, once again, worst scenario. <laughs> Real life will be less extreme. The temperature should be actually better. It shouldn't throttle that much, which I still think though is absolutely acceptable and actually respectable. So. Once again, no real throttling with CPU on load because we stayed at 2.5 or 2.55 instead of 2.7 and I don't really see this as any sort of throttling. Throttling down to around 1.4 gigahertz with additional full GPU load after one hour. So it lost a lot of performance, but when, when will you ever use 100% CPU and GPU load in such a warm environment without any airflow? So see this as an extreme. Um, respectable considering the high room temperature and no airflow, as I said, then almost no throttling with added airflow. For example, with the fan that I will show that you maybe already did see on overlay. So definitely respectable. Highly respectable power despite being dead silent and with really bad environmental conditions. Once again, keep that in mind. On max temperatures, it's definitely too hot to use it in your hand. But as said it already, I don't think you will ever use your tablet with 100% full CPU and GPU load in your hands for that long. I don't, don't see that getting. Um, in normal use, it actually doesn't get warm at all because if you use it like this, browse the web or do anything, watch movies, just don't do any heavy tasks. This stayed absolutely cold at around, I would say maybe 35 degrees, so just slightly above maybe skin temperature, I didn't even notice it. So absolutely fine. And the cooling solution here works really great. As I said, the real life results should be even more positive. So you should be able to keep your clocks longer and you should be able to have lower temperatures. Overall, I am fully satisfied with the cooling solution here because after all, it has the big advantage of being completely fanless, completely noiseless. The only noise that you have is a little bit of an electrical buzz of the of the touchscreen whenever you move the content, but this is something that I wouldn't ever notice. I just noticed that by chance, something you will never hear. So did the liquid loop hold up what it was supposed to? And I would say definitely yes, because if you just use it, for example, for video rendering, where it's pretty much only CPU load, it can stay on full power all the time. If you play games, this should, stu should still able be able to hold up because the GPU load usually isn't 100% and the CPU load as well. So it should actually stay cooler in games. And I will test this and give you a few more results in my full review to keep that in mind because I didn't really do any gaming as this was more of like worst case scenario test once again to keep that in mind. So I hope this maybe answered all your questions. If not, just leave that down in the comments and watch out for the full review in maybe like a few days, like five or six because, or even less because I just need a few more battery values I know all the rest. And once again, thanks to Cyberpol for providing me with this review unit. And I hope you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more and I wish you a nice day. Until next time, bye.